Right. Okay. So it looks like we are officially live on Facebook for more, if I'm not mistaken. Um, awesome. So, um, just waiting for the video live feed to be kicking in. Uh, bear with me one second. Uh, tuk, tuk, tuk. Okay. It's showing live, is it? Cause it's not showing on my screen. Showing live for you, Kevin. It's gone. Uh, it does say we're live on Facebook. So um, hopefully if we're live on Facebook and you can see me, please give me a quick nudge in the chat. Uh, apologies for the little bit of a delay. Uh, we've been um, essentially trying to do a couple of bits in the background here. We're running it straight out of Zoom, which is the first time we're doing this. Uh, so it's very, very cool. So yes, so it looks like we're live on Facebook. So for those of you that are on, um, just want to say a quick hello. Uh, please do... Um, give me a, a hi or a thumbs up or something just so I can see you guys there. Uh, I'm obviously struggling to see uh, exactly where we're at on my end. Uh, Kev, could you possibly drop your laptop up with a Facebook Live up here just so I can see everyone's comments? I can't see the Facebook Live over here either. Um, Kevin's managed to find it, which is amazing. So thank you, Kevin, for being a rock star as always. Uh, super cool. So I just want to first of all kick off with saying um, thank you very much each and every single one of you for tuning in. In today's Facebook Live, today we're going to be having a bit of an interview with Taro, uh, my business partner and cohort. Um, so I uh, just want to open up with saying, hi, Taro, how's it going? I'm, good. I'm very well, thanks, Rich. Good, man, good. Good to catch up. Um, and obviously, you're in sunny Manchester, uh, catching Absolutely. up a long, long way <laughs> <Yes>. away. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it's super cool to catch up with you, man. Obviously, we're going to get a lot of uh, comments in the chat in the background. Don't worry too much. I will read them out as they come through, as I can read them. Uh, we've got a few chats from uh, Colin, Arjvinda, and Kevin uh, just saying hi. So hi, guys. Super cool to see you. Um, I actually want to open up with uh, asking you, uh, essentially, just, um, Taro, tell us a little bit about, about you. Tell us a bit of your, your background, where you're from. So yeah, like, I'm, I'm, I think it'll be useful so everyone gets a bit of background as to who you are. So if you don't mind, yeah. that would be awesome, please, man. Yeah, um, I'll be quick as a rich, uh, rich likes talking so long. So <laughs> that, that will make up our, our partnership anyway. But um, I'm originally from Japan, as you can hear from my accent. I'm not really a native, native English speaker. Uh, I moved to Manchester, UK back in 98. So I've been here for nearly 22 years now. Wow. Um, yeah, and then when I first came here, I um, I discovered my love of sports squash. And uh, uh, while I was learning English, I kind of fell in love with the squash and started skiving classes. I mean, just playing more squash than learning English. Hence, <laughs> I still got heavy accents, I think. Um, <laughs> anyway, and <laughs> then I became a squash coach uh, because I was I was so hooked on it. I just wanted to be on squash court all the time. And me, uh, while I was in, uh, becoming a school, uh, sorry, uh, delivering coaching sessions, my, my boss, who was employed by the local authority at that time, as a squash development officer, he, uh, he moved, moved up the ladder. Then I, I was asked to take over his position. So I, I moved from coaching to uh, in a position where I started managing other coaches. Cool. Uh, but I was in charge of the UK's biggest uh, squash development program. So I was... You know, I was absolutely chuffed and I loved my job to bits. Fantastic, man. Yeah. And, yeah, uh, that, in, yeah, go on. Sorry. No, no, I was going to say, so, I mean, uh, I'm, I find your background very fascinating. Obviously, we've, we both know each other pretty well. So um, I know your background, but it, I think it's useful for others to understand. And in terms of, um, like, your love of squash and what you did, was that, is that something you still do or, you know, it's... I mean, obviously, you invest in property, so this is. I'm, I'm asking for everyone at home. Yeah, so. no, I, I, as a player, I was just a club standard uh, player, um, but I had my goals and then, um, you know, things we had, which I achieved through coaching. Um, I, I can have that story another time, but uh, yeah, I still play squash kind of uh, for fun, uh, not really compete, uh, competitive. I don't really attend tournaments and stuff like that, but yeah, still, still in my blood, yeah. Excellent. And uh, I mean, I've obviously talked about playing squash with you before. And I very specifically remember you saying, um, I'm not going to play squash with you because I don't want to stand in the middle of the court and watch you running around like an idiot the whole yeah. time. So I was like, yeah, fair enough. Um, be, my be my guess if you want to be a headless chicken on court. Yeah. <laughs> um, now, in terms of the squash coaching development role that you did, I mean, are you still doing coaching development or I mean, what happened to that? Uh, uh, no, the, basically after doing my job uh, of love for 10 years, 
the organization went through a restructure, then uh, everyone had to basically reapply for their own job. Ah. Oh. So, yeah. <laughs> and I, I, I'm sure you can guess what happened. Um, you know, I didn't get my, my job. Right. And what I happened? Put, yeah, I was, uh, I was lucky the organization didn't really release people, but they kind of sort of, uh, what they call it, re kind of re develop people. I don't know, I can't remember the term, but anyway, I was put into a different department and different job. Yeah, right. I, ne I, ne I didn't have a passion for. So I slowly sort of uh, started to feel depressed. Um, you know, and then, yeah, uh, last two years of uh, my time with my own, uh, employer, I wasn't, I wasn't, I didn't feel living. Yeah. Right. And I mean, obviously, you evolved into property. Otherwise, we wouldn't be talking here about um, everything that you've achieved throughout property throughout the years. But um, how did you end up getting into property? Sort of what happened? What triggered that? Yeah. That so um, after spending uh, two, I think two to two and a half years with this de department, basically the government started funding, uh, sorry, the government, local government started re releasing people. So they basically offered us to leave with a some little sum of money, which <laughs> because I wasn't really enjoying my job and then I didn't really want to stay in that organization. organization. So I just took a leap and just took that money and left left the job. I didn't have any clue what I was going to do afterwards. Okay. Yeah. Then about three months later, my wife found uh, this advert on Facebook. I think it was on the Facebook. An advert was uh, marketed by a chap called Robert Kiyosaki. And okay. Obviously, right. I, I I noticed his name being Japanese straight away. I don't know who he was at that time. And then, you know, I did a bit of research and then, and then also that ad was about a uh, two hour free uh, property seminar. Yeah. And, you know, my, my wife and I <clears throat> attended that uh, two hour session together and we were invited to attend the three day event, uh, which happened about, I think, three months later, or maybe a couple of months later. Yes. Uh, yeah. And out of interest, how long ago was that? Obviously, that, a bit while. Yeah. That was, I left my job, I think, April 15, and this first two hour seminar was June to June the same year. June 15. Okay. Yeah. Cool. So a nice short short gap. Obviously, that's like five years ago. So that's that's definitely. Uh, well, it's that's been five years. years but, yeah. but I mean, in terms of property experience, did you have more property experience before you went ahead, went into one of those trainings, or was this? Uh, you know, how did that how did that all kick off? How did you get into property in the first place? Yeah, I'm not sure. Um, Yes, um, I, I was already a landlord uh, at that point. Um, I, uh, both, both my wife and I had invested in property, but we had absolutely no knowledge whatsoever. Right, okay. So you started. Purely, uh, people, people said just invest in property, invest in property. So, uh, you know, we just, we just bought houses. Okay. That, that, that pretty much was it. That, and how did that go? I mean, how how was it? Because obviously it's it's a risky way of doing things. So how did how did that end up? Or how did yeah. that go in the meantime? I wouldn't do the same again. But in the end, uh, those pro properties set us free. Oh. So you know, I didn't know when I left my job at that point uh, because you know, I didn't really organize my finance or I didn't know our finance at that time properly. But I left, left my job. Obviously lost income, but that didn't affect me. Uh, affect our lifestyle because we had uh, we, uh, we had run, rental income through the property portfolio. Oh, fantastic! So you're already financially free and didn't even realise. In a, in a way, yes, yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, not not bad, not bad. So landed on your feet, I suppose is the term. So okay, excellent. And um, obviously, we've been working together for a while. Um, I'm sure some people are interested on how we met. So would you mind sharing a little bit about the story about how we met and how that's all sort of come to be over the all those many years ago. Yeah, this is a user, user Richard Lang. Uh, he, and he, li he likes, likes to say speed date, but which is not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay, you know, the, I said you know, that I attended this two or three seminar and went to three day events and I did, uh, at that point I decided, okay, uh, let's do this for my, you know, my next career. Then uh, basically that, uh, I signed up uh, to, so this, they call it advanced mentorship package or whatever, advanced course packages. And then you know, basically it's a series of three hour, three day training based on strategies. And I, I, 
I started attending these courses, uh, which happened in uh, a place called Richmond in down south. And every time I met, you know, so-called federal students and asked sort of, uh, I call it like a ice-breaking questions, you know, you know, have you found your investment area? Have you bought any houses? Blah, blah, blah. You know, these questions just kickstart conversations. The vast majority of people gave me the same answers. Like, oh, I mean, I joined this program like uh, 15 months ago, 18 months ago. I'm still looking for my, they call it gold mine area. Right. And I thought, wow, if I, do, if I keep doing the same thing as uh, what I've been told to do, these people, by the way, have been told to do the way they, uh, they're behaving, I thought I would, I would end up um, being in the same position as they, they are. So I okay. thought I would have to do something different. Right. And and, uh, what... Yeah, go on, sorry, yeah. No, no, it's just, what was yeah. that? I mean, what did you, what did you, what did you do differently? I mean, yeah, um, I started attending local uh, property networking events, which, you know, they, they, they said, we sh uh, they suggested that we should all do. And then uh, one of the panel uh, speakers at that uh, networking event was, she, she, she said that she was a property mentor coach. I never ever uh, knew that sort of thing existed. I thought, right. you know, the property education world was just, you know, people just educate you but I didn't know there was a coach available and then you know um, I said to you earlier and I believe in coaching because uh, uh, so I was a coach in Scotch and I was coached by a uh, top of the Scotch, um, Scotch coach which uh, who improved my, co my, uh, my game significantly fast so I know it works so I thought this is it I have to do this otherwise I would be I wouldn't be able to get out of the rat race or I would say, I would, I would be the same as other people. Right. She, uh, she turned out to be, I mean, she knew, I mean, she, she was an HMO specialist and that was a strategy I picked, I would do because I'd already had by the uh, portfolio at that time. And I didn't um, know. What is HMO, just for those at home that don't know what okay, that is? Okay, yeah. Uh, HMO, it's, it's a bit like a uh, student accommodation. Uh, so you room, uh, rent out a room you rent out a room by room basis uh, in a house or could be a large, large place instead of uh, renting out a whole, uh, whole house. So wow. income is a lot higher, but okay. there, is a, there is a lot of uh, stress and the risk come, come with it. But we can talk about it another time, yeah. I'm sure. Okay, and um, I mean, how did everything go, go from there? Because obviously you now had a mentor, you were underway. Um, how did everything go? Talk, talk yeah. us I mean, working with her, uh, I managed to find a deal about, uh, I think it's just, a, yeah, three months in. Okay. Unfortunately, yeah, unfortunately that deal uh, fell through because it was a reposition. Uh, it was a reposition. So someone gazumped me uh, a week before uh, we were about, uh, we were scheduled to exchange. Mm. And um, I looked at the figures and then we offered them, and, but I, basically I had to give up. Right. Okay. Uh, and uh, and then I, I managed to find another another deal about three months later. But at that point, uh, I saw Richard Advert on Facebook. He his advert was I've got four deals. Um, basically, you know, uh, Richard was looking for either investors, cash investors, to fund these deals, or someone to work with. And I said, you know, the uh, first thing I thought was, bloody hell, when I joined this uh, property training. Um, uh, education they all said to us you know, like uh, you find rows of deals you know uh, we, we teach you how to find deals and you know, the, you know uh, in the end you you, you end up having too many deals so that you can't you know buy them all that wasn't that wasn't uh, that wasn't the case but you you uh, the, in reality Richard was advertising for deals um, and then I thought this guy must be doing something different from you know uh, from what he was just taught um, and then yeah, basically I approached uh, Richard on Facebook and then we had, a, uh, we had a proper chat afterwards and then decided to work together. Yeah. Yeah, and and uh, I mean, what's the different method being used that, um, that it works out to being effective in finding so many deals? Yeah, I mean, uh, if I have to summarize in one, one, or one word or a short sentence, it's a system. Um, his, his lover is a spreadsheet 
<laughs> but the <laughs> but the first time I saw his spreadsheet, I couldn't believe how many formulas were in that spreadsheet. And like, wow, this guy must be a super geek. And then, but you know, the, I asked a few questions about this spreadsheet. Why why do you need these figures? And why these formulas have to be in these spreadsheets? And then that, that all made sense. Yeah. And then basically, Richard uh, Richard he's an engineer, so he he can convert. Uh, how can I say like a What's the word I'm looking for? Um, things you have to do basically into numbers. So if, in, in a way, you, you just follow the numbers uh, that appears appear in the spreadsheet. You, you basically you'd get the answer. So that, that's how sort of that spreadsheet was uh, formulated. Okay, and I mean, obviously- Concepts, so sorry, yeah, yeah, yeah. Richard, is, Richard Spitzer, he is good at putting concepts into numbers, yeah, yeah. Perfect, and obviously since, since doing that, um, you know, you've uh, started a couple of other businesses, many businesses, yeah. uh, and done a I lot. Of I, I, I wish you had been <laughs> just a couple. <laughs> okay, I mean, what? So, um, in terms of obviously the businesses and stuff you've done um, since, so what's what's some of the highs and lows, or what's some of the wins and learnings that you've taken from those businesses over the last um, sort of last few years? Yeah, um, uh, I mean. It's kind of funny, like we, we teach people to stick to one or two strategies. <laughs> <laughs> and I, that's why I said to you earlier, I, I wish you know, we'd stuck, stuck to you know, what we actually, uh, <laughs> yeah, the, uh, preach what you teach, or whatever, uh, whatever the phrase you've got. <laughs> so basically we expanded our business so fast and then created seven, eight different companies. We even uh, created our own refurbishment company, which actually put us in a very, very difficult position later on. But, yeah. So yeah, the biggest learning was like, uh, obviously you, you stick to sort of um, one or two things and nail it and um, then you, you move on to next. Uh, if you expand just to too many things too quickly, you'll become, uh, it, it will become really, really, really hard. And then, yeah, <laughs> you, could, you could potentially lose a lot of money. Okay. And in terms of, I mean, portfolio and stuff done, obviously, I know you've um, bought and sold millions in property over the past few years um, and obviously uh, going through some very interesting expansions and stuff. Yeah. Uh, but in terms of uh, your property journey, your property learnings, uh, if you were to give people at home like the biggest learning that you've taken on property or the most valuable thing, I mean, what, what would that be out of interest? Like the one thing that you say, look, this is it. Yeah. You know, I said earlier, uh, I had no education uh, yet. My wife and I bought, uh, I think we bought eight properties. Literally, okay. literally, uh, we bought, basically we just bought the house, mm -hmm. just rented out. So um, we didn't know any, this concept of uh, buying, a, buying a property, adding value to it, mm -hmm. refinance it, uh, and recycle your money. We have no, we have no idea about it. Had, I, had we known this, our, our portfolio would be probably 10, 20 times bigger than uh, it is now. Wow, the power so, of it. Yeah, uh, but I, I, wouldn't buy, I wouldn't buy those houses in the same way as we bought. Well, in fact, we wouldn't, bought, uh, we would, we wouldn't buy those houses today because there was no, um, no, no space where you can add value to and right. put your, uh, put your uh, we call it put money out and recycle your money for the next, uh, next deals. Uh, but uh, I would call these bad investment, uh, bad properties to buy at that time. Mm -hmm. But as the time moved on, uh, I mean, my first one, well, our first one was back in 2001. Mm -hmm. So now 19 years later, right. uh, we bought it for 40, just I've got a number here, 47,950. It was a little two bed terraced house. Wow. Yeah, and then uh, well, it's actually uh, that was that was a gold mine. Uh, we've rented out very very well so far. Touchwood, uh, we've never had a <laughs> bad tenants, and you know the you know it was it was hardly ever empty or void. We had uh, experienced void with this house, so okay. it's cash flowed all the time, uh, and obviously property value increased significantly over the nineteen the last nineteen years. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. And I mean, other than buying and selling houses, 
um, and uh, no longer doing the refurbishment business. Um, what, what other businesses are you involved in at the minute? What's, what takes up your time? Um, I think the, the, obviously the biggest, thing, biggest thing is the training business we do. Uh, basically, we, um, we pass our knowledge and experience, experience into, well, actually, we, I think our unique, unique point is the system. Uh, I, I mentioned earlier, you know, Richard is good at uh, putting uh, concepts into numbers. And then, uh, and then we basically, uh, our system is basically based on that. So basically, if you follow numbers, uh, all the concepts and then a reason behind is there already, then you actually get the answer. Otherwise, um, um, if you involve sort of your own emotions into your decision-making process, you end up making quite a lot of mistakes. Or you might not even, uh, you might not even do anything. That's, that's the thing, because you know, fear kind of um, um, stops you moving forward. Okay. And I mean, in terms of the training business you run, uh, obviously, there's quite a few training businesses out there, as you're mm -hmm. well aware. Uh, what sort of differentiates you um, and what you guys do um, from others? You guys do. <laughs> we oh, guys do. <laughs> okay, that's fine. Um, you know, that I mentioned that I joined this, uh, uh, so we went to a three-day seminar and mm. then uh, bought a quite expensive uh, property education package. <clears throat> one, of the, uh, one of the uh, programs is called three-day mentorship. So basically, okay. you, uh, you, you choose one mentor, and that mentor comes to your so-called investment patch or area and yep. spend three days with you, viewing properties and stuff like that. Um, and then that was it. That's it. So you basically, basically spend three days with them, uh, with one of the mentors you choose. Um, hmm. For me, like a mentorship and coaching is an ongoing thing. It's not, and then property investment is it's not, it's not done in three days. I mean, you, you do need someone to uh, work with, um, you know, someone, someone that you can turn to, to ask questions and then guide you to, uh, you know, uh, find answers and all that kind of thing. Okay. So, yeah, so, you know, the, the, when, we, when Richard and I actually started this, bu uh, this business, uh, it was actually, uh, we actually targeted the people who were educated by the same company yet, but they are not doing anything or they, they had a uh, you know, massive fear to move forward to do things and stuff like that. That's how kind of we started this business, uh, helping those people. Right. Okay. And you know, they, yeah, then you know, only at the beginning, we, we already, uh, just internally, so was a, we only advertised our business uh, within our network and then started doing mass marketing, uh, mass marketing um, uh, sort of advertisement in the mass marketing. And you know, then we started attracting complete other um, Amateurs. So novice, yeah, amateurs or novice investors. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you know, the, 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 we tweaked our systems and stuff like that to, to be able to, uh, you know, uh, sort of uh, reach out, shot lots of educational videos and stuff like that to, to be able to accommodate these people as well. But one thing um, I do like about this business is it's very rewarding. Okay. So, when it, yeah, when you, uh, it, it, um, property investment is it's quite boring. <laughs> Um, um, unless you like actually, uh, you know, <laughs> buying houses and you know uh, stuff like that. And but once you've done, you know, a few, it's a cookie cutting thing, and it it's just the same thing, one after uh, one after another. So essentially, uh, it becomes very boring, and it removes a lot of uh, sort of people's uh, kind of um, environment. So uh, what? What makes training business interesting is it's, it's pure people's business. So you, you know, you, you touch other people's lives, and you know the, you know they, they touch our lives as well. So I think that's that's what makes this this business most interesting. Okay, and uh, I mean in terms of obviously I know the hundred and fifty some odd mentorship students uh, currently gone through the systems and you know currently involved and passed through. Uh, out of all of those, I mean, when you have dialogues with them and when you have interactions, what do you see as being some of the biggest um, typical challenges they face? Yeah, good question. I mean, we do this uh, in our events, but um, two biggest uh, things, well, actually, we, we say five, five biggest challenges most uh, property investors face. 
is also one finding deals uh, to um, <clears throat> raising finance, finding money, basically. Uh, these are the probably the most two biggest things that lots of people uh, say they can't, the, you know, they, they say they can't. To be honest, I, when, I, uh, when I learned how to invest, invest in property, uh, you know, they taught us to eat. Um, they taught us to raise money using uh, other people's money, which is called OPM in this in this industry. Okay. I never, ever, ever, ever thought I would be able to do that. Okay. Never. I, I thought, like, yeah, never. Um, but to cut the long story short, uh, both Richard and I have raised quite close to million, uh, two million pounds, between two and three million pounds. We don't know exactly how much. Um, and some of the, uh, you know, you always start from sort of your close network, you know, your family and families and family and friends and stuff like that. And um, I've um, I've raised uh, like one example I can give you is um, I raised seventy grand uh, from a person I just met once. Okay. And she a high she, net worth, but yeah. So yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, you know, we have got, um, we have raised, six, uh, you know, well into six figures from one, uh, one entity, one person as well. But um, it's just uh, basically you don't know what is, you don't know, you don't know what you don't know. And also, uh, I didn't believe uh, I would be able to do it. But if if you follow the steps and if you if you actually take action uh, from your knowledge, it actually does happen. Okay. That's the kind of that's the biggest thing, isn't it? Yeah. Excellent. And yeah. I mean, in terms of uh, in terms of everybody out there who's watching this, or people who watch this recording, or people who are just interested in property that might come across this, um, if you were to say what one of your one of you like, what's the biggest tip you can give them? Like the biggest tip you can give them on moving forward, on changing their lives, and building their portfolio. What's the one biggest thing? If you were to say anything that you could say to the entire world, what would it be? Uh, don't do it yourself. Um, as I said, it's it, it is a quite lonely business. If you if you work on your own and if you uh, hit the barrier, you know, um, you know, even even uh, going to pitfall and stuff like that, make mistakes and lose money or whatever, you know, you'll probably give up. Um, if you give up, this you won't be able to move forward from that point. Um, you'll probably never go back either. But uh, if you if if you can if you've got um, if you fit into the right community or right mentor and coaches, I mean for me as I said, uh, having a coach or mentor is 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 a must thing for anything I do anyway. Mm -hmm. If I want to improve in anything, um, that's something I I, I thoroughly recommend uh, you do. Um, education, uh, gaining knowledge is important, but. In in this in this world now, there is too much too uh, there is too much information out there, and right. almost uh, it's too much to confuse you. That's the problem about this uh, property property education. Uh, you know, the, I, I said you know, I signed up to this uh, advanced package. Basically, they taught me like a six seven different strategies. Every right. time I went to a course, every time I went to another course, like oh, I do this one. Next one goes. Next one comes up in you know, two, two months later. I'll do this one because it looks more lucrative. Mm. So it's called the you know, shiny penny syndrome. And you know, they, they feed you with so much information. Uh, and on the always, you know, may, may make it feel, so make you think it's quite easy to do it. Mm. And yep. property investment is simple, but it's not easy. Um, yep. This is the reason why. Um, I said to you, if you work alone, uh, likelihood is uh, likelihood is you are you are likely to give up at some stage. It's it's definitely a tough and interesting business, but mm. okay. Um, well, I mean, it's that I mean, that pretty much covers every question that I had for you. Um, and you know, it's been fascinating to be able to talk to you about this. I'm sure there's some people at home that might have some questions for you. So, uh, if you guys have got any questions that you'd like to ask either myself or Taro. Um, about background, about property, about anything like that, um, please do post it. I'm going to grab the laptop in just a second uh, because the posts are coming through there. That's where I'm looking at the Facebook Live. Unfortunately, Zoom doesn't show uh, the Facebook Live in here. Although, I, can see, I can see the posts. Uh, you can see the posts. Okay, excellent. So if you guys have any questions, then um, please do pop them into the, 
into the chat. Um, I'm fascinated to hear um, if you guys have got any questions or if you want to ask Taro anything or if you want to ask me anything. Um, but, uh, and I'll give you guys a second to do it. I don't want to just stop because there's nothing more infuriating than whilst you're busy typing a question, the stream ends. So, uh, and unfortunately there's a little bit of a delay. There's about a 10 second delay from where we're at here to Facebook. It's, it's quite a sizable delay. So oh, I have wow. to, I have to kind of fill the space um, between asking a question and looking for the answer, uh, which is why it's kind of tough to be able to do these streams. Um, but if you've, if you've got a question, then please do post a question in. Um, likewise, if you've got a question, you're catching this as a recording, um, I, I urge you just ask the question because we still monitor these streams. Um, but if you don't have a question, uh, I ask you just one thing. If you've enjoyed this, if you found this valuable, if you think it's useful um, to hear a little bit from Taro, hear a little bit from me, um, I'd love you just to um, share this post, share this video, um, share the stream, uh, and also give us a like and maybe give us a thumbs up or a high five on the chat. Um, that is always very cool and really appreciate it. Right, we've got a, a, a question from Ajbinda. Um, Taro, uh, the question is basically, um, did you buy your first property uh, mortgage-free? Okay. Did you buy your first property mortgage-free by Ajbinda? Uh, do you mean I bought in, uh, we bought in cash? Yeah, did you oh, buy? Right. No. Uh, I think back in the day, um, I don't think there was any specific differentiation between buy to let mortgage, so-called buy to let mortgage and, and uh, homeowner's mortgage. To be honest, I can't remember because it was 19 years ago. I'm sure we bought, uh, no, no, we definitely bought it with a mortgage, uh, but I don't think it was an uh, interest, interest only mortgage. I'm pretty sure it was a repayment mortgage we bought it with. But since then, uh, we have refinanced uh, once, uh, and then now it, the, prop, uh, the particular house does have a, um, a buy to rent mortgage. So when we refinanced it back in 2000, I think it was seven ish. Um, basically, uh, that, uh, that, that uh, it was a stupid thing, just pre uh, 2008 crash. Uh, <laughs> I, did a shop, I went out to the shopping spree and I bought six houses over market value. But anyway, uh, yeah. so, so what was the question actually? <laughs> so so it you wasn't for cash or did you buy it on the yeah, mortgage? Yeah, I didn't buy in cash. I bought it with the mortgage. Yeah. Perfect. Right. We also got a question here from Ashu, which is, uh, Taro, are you still actively investing in properties? Uh, if so, what strategy and what areas? Okay. Uh, uh, since I started working with Richard, uh, and um, we, we actually developed uh, our, our own portfolio uh, within the company. You know? So I don't really buy any properties in my personal names anymore. It doesn't really make sense because um, there's a tax reasons why uh, you don't you shouldn't really have a big a large portfolio uh, in in under your own name. So you should own your properties your in your businesses. So and then we Richard and I worked uh, and were brought more partners in uh, and created a uh, you know fairly large portfolio quite fast. And we moved into sort of development. Uh, started buying commercial uh, properties and then converting them into residential uses. Um, that's what we are do uh, we were doing, um, but now we uh, we are more sort of uh, into um, technology side of the business. I mean, Richard, uh, Richard, the expert at there, so that's where our energy and the resources are currently going. Okay, and are we involved in any developments or anything at the minute? Just so people know that you know we're not just sitting on our hands and not doing anything. Yeah, um, we had one large development which we got planning. Um, well, it was like an old, it was a newspaper distribu distributor's uh, building we purchased, uh, a place called, uh, called Staley Bridge, in, which is in east of Manchester. And we, uh, we got planning on it to build 10 apartments. Mm -hmm. I think it was two, six two beds and four one bed. Yep. Um, we're working with our partners in Switzerland. Uh, but we just came to a decision where uh, we didn't we didn't pursue actually developing this site, but we decided to sell it, which happened I think last month, in fact, yeah. yeah. So we we purchased it for three seven five k, I think it was around up. Uh, I think we agreed to buy three seven five k, and we sold it for just under four hundred fifty grand. Okay, so not a bad little project, and then um, obviously the church as well. So we're involved. Yeah. In the church, so. Is that yeah. 13 apartments, I believe? 
I think it's 12. 12, okay. Yeah. Um, was, it, was it 13? I can't remember now. Yeah, I'm <laughs> no, pretty yes, you're right. Yes, you're right. Yes, you're right. Yeah, yeah. So you I think you would try to, try to squeeze 14 and they couldn't do it. Yeah. Correct, yeah. Bloody planners. So, um, okay. Uh, really good question. Next question here from Colin. Has social media made property investing easier or more difficult? I think, uh, yes and... Uh, Yes to both, in fact. Um, it depends what you look at and then how you look at, look at as well. In terms of uh, raising finance, social media has made it a lot easier. Um, you need to learn how to market yourself and basically you need to learn how to sell yourself as well. Um, you know, some of the, some of the monies we have raised, uh, we basically simply just put uh, um, kind of wishing sentence on Facebook, asking for money, and then you know some people are willing to uh, lend you money. Oh my God, it's here! Um, at, at the same time, uh, there is a lot of noise uh, on Facebook. Uh, um, I think the difficult part for most most people face is when you start seeing like a success, too many successes of other people's uh, on Facebook. You start comparing those with you. And then you like you feel like oh, I'm not doing I'm not doing enough I'm not you know this there are too, so many people succeeding in, in this in this in this field so I don't think I'll be able to do it uh, a lot of people kind of uh, get crushed by it and then disappear from the scene as well so pros and cons so um, but for me uh, social media is a great great tool I mean for, Richard agrees with it um, with me as well. So you just need to be selective. Uh, no, selective is not the right word. You just need to uh, you just need to know how to use it, what and what information you uh, you take on and believe. Yeah, Perfect. stuff like that. Yeah, lovely. Um, really good answer. Really good question as well. Thank you very much, Colin. Uh, another question from Ashbindo, which is, uh, if you had to do it all again, what would you do differently? Great question. I absolutely love that question. Yeah, uh, I, I wouldn't have bought any properties uh, I couldn't, um, I can't add value to. So simply, you know, the, as I said, the, uh, we bought eight properties, literally just bought them, rented out. Rented out. So I, would ever, uh, I wouldn't ever do that again. Uh, I would always find a uh, so-called so distressed property. And then typically you do refurbishment and add value to it, and then rent it out and refinance it later. And then take a bit of uh, some of your money out and, uh, and use that money again to re reinvest. So if you keep, if you do that, um, obviously you, you'll be able to buy more properties and then create more cash flow. And also, I don't have any uh, cash flow concept uh, either. So I said earlier, um, I, did, I had a shopping spree and bought six properties. None of those six properties actually cash flowed at that time. Literally, rental income covered mortgage payments. Pretty much that was it. So wow. potentially, uh, I mean, yeah. If I look at, look at the uh, figures properly, probably it was negatively cash flowing at some stage. Luckily, uh, my mortgage was all all my mortgages are trucker mortgages. Um, then uh, when the base rate went down, when the, when, the, when the economy went bad, so my mortgage interest rate went down. Followed it basically. So okay. At some stage, it was zero. <laughs> nice. Uh, only about two months though, <laughs> but that's that's how uh, those six houses became a safer uh, investment. And then obviously, as the time go, as the time went, so two thousand six, seven is about fifteen years now, isn't it? Mm. Um, profit, property value uh, has has recovered, and well, area, um, these areas in Manchester uh, have actually surpassed uh, two thousand eight stage now. So, yeah. They, they, uh, they are good. So just to make sure uh, you add, you, you buy a property um, that you can add value to. That's the key thing. Excellent. Yeah. Brilliant. Lovely. Well, I mean, it looks like that's uh, all the questions that we had. So um, firstly, I want to say thank you each and every single one of you for tuning in uh, and for engaging, asking the questions and being involved uh, and also forming part of our journey, which I absolutely love. Um, and Tara, I'd also like to say um, from myself, also from uh, our mentorship students and from everybody who knows you, uh, a huge big thank you for everything you do for everyone. Um, you are a wonderful human being uh, and we all appreciate you very much. And thank you for taking the time this evening as well. Um, it is really appreciated, mate. 
Oh. <laughs> <laughs> There's so many jokes. Okay. There's so many jokes. I'm going to stop. Uh, but yeah, thank you, man. Really appreciate it. And I hope you have an amazing night. And I look forward to, um, well, obviously, we're running the event this weekend. So um, anybody who wants to attend, we're running a three day event uh, live this weekend. Um, absolutely for free. There's a registration link that hopefully uh, one of the team will drop into the chat. Um, please get yourself booked in. I look forward to seeing you at the training. I hope you have a wonderful week. Um, thank you very much for your time and I look forward to seeing you all again very soon. Cheers, guys. Thanks, Taro. Bye.